We have started with the Lycan, with the Finier, with the supercars, but this is just 10 to 20 percent of what the company actually does. Where did the ones you build go? First cars went initially to China, mm -hmm. followed by the other cars to China. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the crime prediction software, you have the facial recognition, everything is connected through the black box. This car here was a test vehicle that we drove for two years with the police force. Here we go. Okay, I'll see you guys there. No, you guys are the first to see that actually. Nobody's ever seen the factory in construction. Stay tuned for next year for this uh, new car coming. What's up, people? I am in Dubai, in the UAE, here at W Motors with Ralph Dabal, the CEO of W Motors. Ralph, how are you? I'm great. Good to see you, Casey. Tell me, it was, it was a little bit of a travel from the United States, but well worth it. Um, and thank you for making the time. No, we're happy to have you here, really. Honestly, just sharing this world with you is uh, what we've been waiting for. And uh, I'm happy you answered back to our invitation. So it's good to have you in Dubai. Of course, how could I not as a car guy <laughs> with what's going on here? And the thing that I took away um, is you're not just building cars. This is an engineering company and the scope is much larger. Absolutely. There's so much happening in the back end yes. that many people don't know about. And we have started with the Lycan, with the Finier, with the supercars, but this is just 10 to 20% of what the company actually does. Right. There's so much more. And I'm sure you know, you know a lot about it uh, well, by now. Exactly. And I've learned a lot more, which is hugely exciting. But I think in some ways, what I've seen is because the Lycan behind us, and of course through Fast and the Furious, has become so iconic and so famous, that's actually, I think, made it harder for some car people to understand the scope of what's going on at W Motors. Uh, listen, the, the Lycan has always been, you know, in our heart. You know, it's been mm -hmm. something that we created, uh, that started the company, that created the brand on a global level. You're here because of Lycan. Everybody knows it, you know, so everybody yeah. talks about it. Uh, but of course, you know, this also attracted a lot of attention and a lot of business lines mm -hmm. to the company. And that where we saw gaps, you know, especially being here in Dubai, in the Middle East, the industry, the industry is quite new. So we wanted to create something different, something new, started to teach and educate the people. Uh, we saw some uh, opportunities to go into the military, into defense, into security into uh, mobility, into EV, into autonomous, into literally everything related to wheels or mobility in general. Right. And this is what the company is about today. It's about creating mobility solutions and creating the industry from scratch. So it's a big challenge that we, be, uh, we took on 10 years ago, even 14 years ago when we started the company. And we're well on, uh, you know, in, on track to create the new mobility sector and industry for the Middle East, which is it's quite a big, uh, big milestone and we're extremely proud of it. Well, hugely so. And um, I want to relate this to you guys in terms of a car company. One thing I took away with regard to the engineering expertise here, there's a company in the United States called Pratt & Miller. And I think a lot of you all are familiar with them. They, they create the factory Corvette and Cadillac race cars for GM, as well as doing military contracting vehicles. And in a, W Motors in many ways parallels that, but also I see your scope goes far beyond just that. Ralph and I are actually going to go on to your building a new factory here in it's called the Silicon Oasis? Silicon Oasis. Uh, what is that? That's fascinating. Well, Silicon Oasis uh, is a free zone area here in Dubai, which is mainly for tech companies. So it's mm -hmm. a bit like the Silicon Valley of, of Dubai. And it expanded recently into light in the industries. And we're actually the only industrial company that's actually manufacturing in this area here. Uh -huh. It's autonomous ready. It's a 5G zone. Uh, it's a drone friendly area as well. So everybody can actually test their, their vehicles, their flying vehicles as well oh, wow. in this area here. And it's becoming really the center of technology for the whole Middle East. So we're proud to be based here. We're proud to have our headquarters here where we are now. And our new factory, which we're going to go see it uh, in a bit, is, uh, is quite, quite intriguing, quite amazing, actually. I think so, too. Let's yeah. get a taste of that right now. Shall we show them some things and walk all around? All right, all right. Let's walk around here, then. Yeah, definitely. Lycan prototype, yes? That's it. That's the original Lycan uh, prototype zero, which we call. That's the first car we ever built, physically number one. Uh, we started in 2008, the development, uh, the car came out in 2013 as a f full prototype and launched in 2012 as a show car. Uh, that's the actual car that's been uh, driven heavily, I must yeah. say, around the world. Uh, it's quite amazing. We kept it as is since it was built, so mm -hmm. we, we didn't change anything in the car, uh, just services from time to time. It has, I think, over 50 or 60,000 kilometers uh, on it to driven. Yeah. And uh, you're going to enjoy this car driving, and I think in the next few days uh, it's going to be quite, quite uh, an experience. Oh, indeed. And I am hugely honored to get to do this. And as you guys well know, uh, Genius Garage is, has one of the stunt car body yep. shells and we've been building something. So it's really incredible to see the prototype and everything that goes into it. But um, it's made beautifully um, from the mechanics and everything to the ground up through all of the, the carbon fiber coachwork. Um, 
and it's fascinating because I can see all of the racing derived engineering that went into it but obviously making an incredible luxury hypercar that goes into it and uh, frankly I really like the touch of the diamonds in the headlights I probably would have done exactly the same thing and I'm why not right and I'm an American from the mid the, the Midwest so it's Midwest meets Middle East and we have the same taste no, but I'll tell you the story of the diamonds you know the story yes? of the diamonds is uh, we wanted to give an identity you know lichen is wolf W Motors is wolf lichen yes. is a werewolf and every car we made of the seven lichens have different diamonds and different colors. You have rubies, you have jades, you have sapphires, you have diamonds. And this gives an identity to the wolf. So you have blue carbon with the blue sapphires sure. here. And every time you see the car driving behind you with the light reflection, it reflects in the lights, which is in the eyes of the wolf. Right. So this is an idea to give a life, let's personality say, of the personality iris. and life to the car itself. So that's one, one touch. Now, diamonds, people think it's the most expensive <laughs> part of the car. But on the contrary, the lights themselves are 10 times more expensive than the diamonds inside the car. So, I believe it. But a few things. One, uh, there is uh, a chassis back here that yeah, may relate yeah. to something in the future. Yeah, I know. This is actually the, uh, the new generation chassis of the Finier. So the Finier that you see here is the pre-production. Very cool. And this is actually the production version of the Finier, which is being built here in Dubai for its clients. Uh -huh. uh, so we're proud to say that we're actually building now the cars in Dubai, which is quite amazing. So some of our cars are still built in Italy. And now we're shifting the production bit by bit, you know. And we're going to see the factory. We're going to see the factory as well. So that chassis is the new generation Finier Super Sport with 800 horsepower, uh, lightweight uh, chassis and pushrod suspensions and everything. It's and incredible. It's quite amazing. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave a little bit to your imagination on this. But the Gaieth, I am so fascinated by this. Can you tell me, uh, them quickly the story again about you originally made this as a show vehicle and displayed it and the Crown Prince was so fascinated yeah, by yeah. it. Tell us that story. So I, I teased you guys, I think, in a video uh, briefly about this car, mm -hmm. and it is actually publicized on media, on the media. So you yes. can see on social media quite a lot about this car. But initially, it was called the Beast. We launched it as a Beast. It was a concept for the police force to be the fully, fully embedded smart uh, patrol vehicle. Mm -hmm. To have, you know, we have cameras in the front. We have facial recognition, uh, uh, the plate recognition, driver behavior, crime prediction. We literally have everything you can imagine that a police officer needs embedded in the car itself with it's a impressive. beautiful, crazy design. And it's big, it's a big car. Yeah. Now the first day we launched the car, we had the honor to have the Crown Prince of Dubai uh, come in and he fell in love with such a you know initiative and he named the car after his Falcon, uh, Rayaf. So his Falcon is named Rayaf. Of course, you know, you must have a Falcon at home and you have to call him Rayaf and then we called the car Rayaf. So it became a national pride, it became a government project now and this car here was a test vehicle that we drove for two years with the police force. And currently, uh, we are actually building all these cars to be delivered uh, to the police within these facilities, which we're going to see in yeah. a bit. Uh and that's actually very exciting. You're going to see the, the final production and building of this. And um, I just like the story as well, relating to the Crown Prince and falconry being it's, it's an, amazing, ancient, yeah. Yeah, yeah. an ancient sport and it's art. It's a tradition. It's something that I love as well. I, I hope to experience that one day here. But um, it, it's just something that gave it a little more meaning relating to the region and the culture yeah. than just simply a police vehicle. Can we look at this one at all? Come in. Yes? This, it's it, genuinely, guys, it's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, I've got some American police friends and getting to see their vehicles. Um, and this is, this is an astonishing piece. It really is. The technology in it is awesome. Uh, Ralph, what, what do we got here? So that's the VIP edition of the car, which is created for convoys to be protected at the same time. You have eight screens connected in the vehicle itself. You have the driver behavior. You have the crime prediction software. You have the facial recognition. Everything is connected through the black box and projected to the car itself. Are we okay to see everything on the screen? Yeah, right it's now? fine. Okay, it's fine. And you have the 360 camera on the roof. You have two drones. I like to see the camera on the roof here. You have two drones embedded as well in the roof itself. Uh, you have the step. You have. Uh, police lights, sirens, uh, all embedded in the design cell. Yeah, oh, I got to show you guys the steps back here. Now, uh, Ralph, with regard to the back here, so right here below the bumper, they have uh, in, in this generation and the ones coming deployable drones from the top that people will be able to control from a home base, shall we say, yep. to be able to see what's going on and relate that in real life time to the police officers. But another aspect that I thought was interesting, how do we open this? There's a button in the center. For me. Just um, here. Okay. This little one? Yep. So this pops open, which was an opportunity where you could have officers on the reel relating to uh, control and just getting around, which I thought was a fascinating touch. And you know, you can see a 360 cam that deploys up here like a periscope, as well as where drones come out. And we're going to see a whole lot more, you guys. But it's just very fascinating to see what's going on with this. Now, with the Dubai police, this is being built specifically for United Emirates Police Force. Uh, specific to start. 
This and this is the kind of the prototype the show prototype, vehicle. Yeah. So yes. we're building for Dubai Police now uh, some fleets that are being delivered, and then mm -hmm. this car is going to go regionally and globally as well. So we're marketing the car in different variants. You know, right. you have the rescue, the SWAT, uh, mm -hmm. the first responder, the patrol. All of them are going to come with different specs, like a package kit that you can choose. Mm -hmm. Same, you know design, let's say, but different equipment that come with it. And they're all going around the world depending on what police force and, and the what needs. they need and the needs yeah. of the need. Yeah. Whether it's, um, and even if it's even more military related, if you get it, into it comes shielding in armored, and things yeah. like that. V6 armored as well comes in as an option uh, on these cars. So it's, it's quite an amazing program. It's called the Rayath program now. Cool. And not only is it in cars, so cars is one thing, but in 2022, you're going to see a full line of vehicles, including pickup trucks, tricycles, elect this electric bike that you see behind me as mm. well, behind you, is, is also uh, one of the programs. We have a complete kit that comes with it, with yes. the embedded technology. So it's a full line, and the target is within five years to replace all the fleets of all the police force in the region with connected vehicles, to have the same softwares, same line of vehicles, all talking to each other, all communicating with one system, while rather what's happening today right. It's a bit of a mess where everything is talking to 20, 30 different systems, nothing communicating with each other. So we're trying to change that bit by bit. There. Well, and that, that's neat because then that shows some of the vision and leadership relating to the area. Absolutely. Of the whole. And it's, it's amazing you're tied in. So guys, when you see W Motors and people are like, oh, they don't just build hypercars? I don't understand what's going on with these magical things going in the background. Yeah, they're doing really cool other stuff. But so here we are and we're going to go see more of those. We saw the prototype of the Lycan. Now, just touching on this because this is something that car guys all wonder about. Wh who, where, may I ask, where did the ones you build go, as much as that you can say? So as much as I can say, uh, when the Lycan was launched initially, the first cars went uh, initially to China, mm -hmm. followed by the other cars to China. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have, so basically it's, uh, we have in Thailand, a car that went to Thailand, and then we do have a car in South in America as well. Yes. Now the car that was in America didn't stay in America. We don't know where it went after that. Mm -hmm. But this car initially went to Miami, and then from there it went somewhere else. We Fair don't enough. Know. But in the end, you know, these cars, as we explained earlier, we talked about it earlier, the people about the Lycans, you know, are collectors in a different way. The people who are buying the Finiers are car drivers, racers, that appreciate actually the performance of the car rather than just the looks and the collecting of vehicles. So and the, the exclusive, absolutely. the exclusivity. So, so, so we, we do have a much you know, bigger relationship and stronger relationship and bond with the Finier clients because mm -hmm. we do events together, we go driving right. together, we go to tracks together, rather than just buying a car and just disappearing with an overall. Right, order. right. So that's the difference, yeah. Yes, so I hope that kind of makes sense to you guys how it got started. So you start with a huge splash, an amazing car with the company doing the hyper car, and you get, get going with that, and now the Finier, you're building far more, and I'm at, we're actually going to get to experience this at a track in a couple days. Yeah, you are. I'm so excited, over the moon about that. But it's it's really getting into now, guys. We're in hypercar territory that you're going to see and relate to, and you're going to start seeing these out more. So for all you car enthusiasts, that's kind of the deal. But Rao, let's see. So where are we at right now? What are we going to go see? So we're in this uh, setup, which is a warehouse setup. Uh, it's a gallery showroom style mm -hmm. where all our cars are here. Uh, just to be able to understand a bit more about the company right. from chassis to hypercars to police vehicles yeah. to concept vehicles fast and furious stunt car which i'm sure is oh yeah <laughs> yeah you know? and over here we have also part of the design uh, team uh, that work usually on on the cars on the concepts that we build mm -hmm. so it's nice to see a bit what we're what they're doing so uh, do you have an idea and a feel on how things are being designed and now we're going to go to the engineering side uh, do you want to follow me yeah definitely yeah. let's lead the way some engineering in here. Yeah, so this is where the engineering happens. It's a mess because this is where the guys are working usually. Real day work. Day and night. <laughs> Real work. <laughs> and uh, that's Martin, our head of engineering. Really? So Martin has been leading the projects uh, since day one, you know, just making sure that everything is smooth and uh, always trying to find ways to make everybody's life difficult. What is this? 3D printing stuff constantly. Well, let's go see. <laughs> working on the gear boots for the car. So it ends up looking something like that. Oh, I see. Perfect. So this is completely 3D printed, and then we send it for upholstery for leather, and then uh, the leather comes in, plugs into the original gear, and you have a gear lever. That's it. Fantastic. <laughs> Wait, now I may have heard you did an all-nighter. Was that last night? Uh, oh, every night. About three months worth? Every night? Oh, yeah. wow. Fantastic. <laughs> so we're a bit, a bit low on, on sleep at the moment, but we're getting through it. It's very real. I love it. Okay, Ralph, what else do we got? Yeah, so, so over here, you know, the beautiful part about it is that we want to try to innovate as much as possible. And we always have very tight deadlines, schedules, a lot of deliverables that have to be happen. And we recently went into 3D printing. So this is something quite cool for the automotive industry. And uh, so we have several machines in here and we're printing a lot you know, of new things that we want to use you know, in our cars that we need. 
And we ended up literally learning how to do it, you know, so we engineered the part, we designed it, you know, we sent it for printing, we tested, we tested, we tested, and now literally over 20% of the car parts are 3D printed. So uh, if you look at all the small brackets, the switchboards that you see here, this is all 3D printed. Oh, yes. Uh, the logos, the, the, the headlamps, you know, everything that we wanted to build inside the car ended up being 3D printed, which is quite amazing. So I'll show you now how we're, how we're using the printers. So this is, this is the lab, which we call uh, Warehouse One. We call it the lab. So we have the 3D printers over here. Uh, these are great machines that we got uh, that help us you know, print different materials. So we use composite materials, we use uh, high density plastic, we can even print some uh, steel parts as well. Uh, and this, these machines have been running for 24 hours for the past 90 days nonstop. Yeah. And the reason we did that is uh, very simply lack of supply chain here in the UAE, mm -hmm. which we didn't know, you know where to go to, to. And if we wanted to order these parts with a standard engineering process, it would take us maybe four to five months to get one part, do the tooling, do the mold, you know. And the cost get astronomical. Cost is astronomical. The time and money goes through. Exactly. So we've realized, you know, with the same with the same amount of money, we can actually buy machines, learn how to do it, and start, you know, utilizing and amortizing the machine as much as much as possible. Correct. And still learn. So by the time the new factory is ready, we're ready to go from day one. And that's what we did. Well, it's a smart basic business move because you're you're making it so it works out on a monetary and time investment level. But it, it like you're in you're in innately creating the intelligence and learning and growth at it, yep. which something I, I'm just going to throw in there, guys, something I've really enjoyed relating to Ralph on today is because um, I know that you all just get to see Fast and Furious like and Fenrir and dream and wonder and myth and all. But Ralph is a real business guy, real car guy. And we've been relating on all the details and aspects of him building W Motors and everything that relates. And um, that's something that's meant a lot to me today. I just wanted to say that. Thanks, Casey. Appreciate it. I'm not going to bore you too much here, but so this is the standard workshop. Basically, that's station two usually. So station one is warehouse three. It's a bit confusing. I know one in numbers a bit. Sure. So station one is warehouse three. Uh, the cars are prepared there. This is where we do the final, the first assembly of the cars, which is body in white. Everything comes in together. Then it goes to the paint shop. From the paint shop, it comes here in the lab. That's mm -hmm. where we do all the connectivity of the vehicle itself. Initial stage of wiring, harnesses, right. everything comes into the car. Then it goes to warehouse two, which is station three. <laughs> get it? All right, let's get there. Woohoo! one side. What do we got? So that's warehouse two. Which okay. is station three. Three. <laughs> so this is one of the last uh, steps before the car goes out for delivery. Mm -hmm. So the car in the station, we actually fit it with everything that's needed, the electronics, uh, the seats, the seat belts, the... Come have a look. Can we see some things? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is where we put in, you know, the final clusters, the screens, everything's connected. Got it. The car gets clean, polished, uh, stickers on, tint on, and it goes out for testing before delivery. So I believe this car will be delivered in a couple of hours. Oh, wow. Which is amazing. So you're seeing it live, fresh from the factory. Fantastic, before. getting all polished up. And I think, so we're still missing the seats. So this is the first car ever built in the UAE, completely. So it's quite amazing to see so many parts being built here. And the challenge that we had, and that's what everybody was feeling, is mm -hmm. that once we decided to take the step to produce locally, we knew that we we're gonna have a, a big difficulty finding the suppliers, the supply chain, the workforce, the labor, yes. anything needed to build a car. And um, somehow we were able to do it. You know, we found the right, right. suppliers that were able to adapt to our needs. Uh, we found some labor that we trained and we took it as an opportunity to start building the team and grow bit by bit. And today by doing that, it was a big statement and a big, you know, confirmation that everything is possible to be done. Even in a place where they don't have an industry, mm -hmm. you can actually start it, you can actually build it. So I believe we're on the right track to actually grow it even beyond what we see here. And the new factory is going to be a statement to say, you know what, it's happening, but whether you like it or not, right. we're building cars in the UAE for the first time. Well, exactly right. And it was exciting to see because obviously this is based on a manufactured platform. Yeah. Um, however, one initial prototype I saw was created some of the bodywork and such in another country, like a supply chain when yeah. you were developing and building that. And then you realize when it got here, you were actually able to make all of your own pieces and parts. And, and that's what you mean by building everything and finishing it in Dubai here yeah, in the UAE. But there is a reason why we don't build it on our own platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, to take a government deal or a government pr project, even even a normal B2B deal, you need to provide five to seven years of spare parts, ser uh, service and warranty on the parts, mechanical. So if you're going to build your own platform and chassis and engine, which many companies did, and some of them are companies that are known, we'll talk about it off, off the microphone, they provided these products you know, to many governments. And then when they came to actually sign the deal, mm -hmm. they couldn't 
have any answer regarding service contracts or warranty or spare parts. So when we went to and made a deal with an existing OEM, so you know what? We made a deal with them. We have a license now to use their, their products. And then we're building on top of it. They provide the spare parts and the mechanical parts. We provide the exterior, interior, body panels, which over two to 300 parts are built from scratch. Right. And we end up having a turnkey solution to any government. And that's what we did. Indeed. And again, for all the car guys out there that are specifically like talking about not making everything, this is how business isn't done. This is how you build a much bigger empire. And, and this is just a smart way of utilizing effectively the platform, making the right contracts so you have the relationships for the government. And then you all can tailor this and create an incredible vehicle for the UAE police. And many other police forces, maybe. Oh, fantastic. Let me show you here. So what's special about this car is you have 13 cameras. That's the production version. So. 13 cameras embedded, uh, facial recognition, plate recognition, the whole thing. Yes. 360 camera, uh, plus you have a driver monitoring camera, driver behavior, and you have an ADAS front uh, facing camera. Now every car, this as a police spec, comes in equipped with a special tools in the rear. These are all security and safety equipment. They come in within its uh, special custom made belts and drawers, and then you have a drone that's embedded here as well. All these are connected to the command center mm -hmm. where they can control all the feeds for the cameras, the 360 tower, and the drone feed as well to see what's happening and then update their black box and send information to the officer driving the car. So this is a way to control what the cameras are seeing at the same time be able to see everything at the same time, you know, 24 hours a day, which is quite incredible. And we don't believe there is a single police car in the world that's equipped as much as the Gaia is. That's a turnkey smart patrol vehicle. That's, uh, that's what we're proud of. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. I haven't seen anything like this. And if I may, this being kind of a first generation, you have a drone here in the back in its own special container. But in the future, if I'm not mistaken, they will be deployable drones from the roof. Yeah. They will even be able to change their own battery packs. Yeah, so deployable drones from the roof, autonomously triggered, mm -hmm. either by a signal or a message or an alert that happened somewhere. They can fly up to 16 kilometers, land back in a moving vehicle, swamp batteries, and fly back again. So this is a technology line. And the more cars are going to have driving on the road, the more drones are going to be connected as a mesh system and can fly off and connect and have several feeds at the same time and give it back to the command center. So that's what's happening in 22, which is in the next few months, uh, in 2022. And next year, hopefully, we're going to start seeing these concepts on the road, maybe. So right. let's, uh, let's see. And it's just a small personal note, I do have a number of police officer friends and uh, I see a value to the, the drone just in helping support that, helping connect with others. And something my wife and I have noticed here being in Dubai in the UAA, um, it's a beautiful city, it's, it's safe. Um, so something is, be, is being done well. Um, and even in a short time, being in America, not being the Middle East yet, uh, but for the first time this time, it's something that I got the impression this is somewhere I could take a family. It'd be something really enjoyable. So it's, it's nice to see that and connect with um, partially how they're able to do that. It is one of the safest cities in the world, Dubai, and uh, we're proud to be able to make it safer in a, somehow, in a way, with these cars. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying my time. What else should we see? You want to go see the factory? Yes, I do. All right. I'm thinking maybe we should take a guy after the factory. Can we? Who's the boss? Let's ask the boss. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got all excited. We're like, wait a minute, hold on. These, these police vehicles have to be delivered. So we decided <laughs> that. And then, and then we were like... And then he's like, do you want to just take the veneer? And I'm somebody, like, somebody yeah, say, somebody but say no. we're, we got a couple of days, we're going to do that. So we're going to take something even crazier. What, they're the Twiggies, the Twizzies? Twizzies. What, no, nobody in America knows what that is. What is that? I have no idea, to be honest. Let's I mean, go do uh, it. <laughs> are we taking that? Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're electric. Uh, it's a mix between a scooter and a car. That's hilarious. These cars were, so Renault launched them in France initially to have drive it in the city for students, I think. I think you're even allowed to drive it without it's, a license. Is there's actually room for two people, allegedly? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a two-seater. Okay, how? Uh, so we should decide how adventurous we want to be. How about you drive this, I'll wedge myself in the back, and the camera guy can go in the back. Sounds good. You know, car guy fine. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. All right. This may be a terrible idea. I don't know why I came up with that idea. Okay, so I'm going to get in the back of a Twizzy. Oh, I can do this. Let me get this. Here you go. Oh, you're being too kind. <laughs> hey, this is not bad. Around the seat. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Here we go. Okay, I'll see you guys there.
Thank you. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that was great. We're here. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we're standing on the grounds of the first automotive factory in the Middle East. Hmm? And it's a huge milestone. So we broke ground here in 2019, uh, 2020, January 20, literally a few months before the whole world went, you know, oh, yeah. silent. And we uh, restarted again the construction literally a few months ago. And we're expecting to be completed by May 2022. So in the next few months, we're going to be oh. operational. The building is looking great. The progress is looking amazing. And that's a dream come true. I've been always wanted, you know, I've always wanted to have this actually built here in Dubai after literally being for nearly 10 years in Dubai in the UAE. Uh, we're seeing this beautiful thing happening behind us, which is a massive milestone for the whole region, for the UAE, for Dubai, for the automotive industry. And we can actually say now that we're building cars in a factory of that size on the international scale, which is quite amazing. So I love it. Let well, me take you around. Yeah. Okay. Lead the way. That's, we're going to be climbing from here. Okay. So we're standing now in the uh, showroom area. Got it. So what we had in downtown has been duplicated here. We oh. have a configurator section, you know, for the VIPs. Uh, we have a nice video wall, uh, a nice bar, a beautiful burger place outside as well. For oh, you get a burger place. Oh come yeah, on. That, we have to. I mean, come on. What factory doesn't have a burger place? I mean, come on. So that's gonna be out here, and then now we're gonna take you in from that side. This is where we're gonna have a, this is where we're gonna have a cinema. So the cinema is gonna be for private viewings for students, people to come in visit. It's a touristic site as well, as it is the first of its kind in the region. We know that we're gonna have tours coming in to discover more about the history of cars, the culture of cars. So this cinema is gonna play some movies about you know historical movies of cars, some documentaries, and in the evening it's gonna be private viewings for students to come in, enjoy a burger, look at the cars, and watch a movie. So it's gonna be a fun attraction as well in the area. So here's the engineering center. So what we saw earlier was a temporary engineering center. This area here is dedicated for engineers, designers. That's gonna have 26 uh, uh, stations for design. So we're gonna have a video wall, which is a life size eight meter long for designers to actually see their creations in front of them in scale one-to-one, -one, which is quite amazing. And all the engineers are gonna be having fun with their 3D printers all around here. And then upstairs on the second floor is gonna be the R&D and software development uh, center where we're going to be creating non-stop technologies and R&Ds and, uh, and softwares, you know, on the go for different usage, not mobility and other. It's going to be from the, from the heart of this factory. And then this area, which is not ready yet, on the second floor is the HQ for the management and the marketing and the sales, all this building over here. And now we head into the manufacturing space. All right, so this is manufacturing the start of it. Yeah, I mean, we're standing here in prototype room one. So in this area here, we have one, two, three, four, five different rooms. When I say rooms, it's actually like a full 2,500 square feet floor that's completely sealed. And that's where we're gonna build the special projects in these areas where usually we can have either eight vehicles in one section or maybe two long buses or some special you know, police projects happening inside here. Then over there in this area is the interior upholstery section where we're going to be doing all the interior, the upholstery, everything to be locally made in this facility here. And then if you go one step further, actually let's, let's step there. It's even better. Here we are. This is the most exciting. So where, where we're standing here is where we're going to have the two production lines for our Finier Supersport, mm -hmm. which is literally this area here, and our upcoming EV supercar, which is gonna be fully produced on this production line. And what's amazing is that not only are we gonna be producing the car here, we're also gonna be producing the chassis here, which is a monocoque and our autoclaves. We're gonna be doing the battery assembly here as well, and we're gonna do the motor assembly here. So this is gonna be literally the first car to be 100% built in the UAE as an electric supercar. So that's really exciting for us. It's a challenge, we know that, uh, and we know it from all the different people we work with, but uh, I think the challenge is accepted by us, and then we're doing it. So that's going to be a big step. So literally, this is going to be the production line for these vehicles where we're standing. 
And on that note, I think a lot of people, car enthusiasts, don't realize this yet. You said you're building an EV supercar or hypercar. Yep. Super, what, uh, supercar, let's say. Super, hyper, hypercar. So you, you were mentioning that. So you started with the hypercars, the Lycan, the Fenrir, internal combustion, but now. The, the, the future is here with that. The future is electric. I mean, we know that. And many people started, you know, and went to this game before us, of course, you know, but we still have the Finier, which is our bread and butter, you know, which is our all soul as well. But the Finier is ongoing for the next three, four, five years. It's going to be an ice engine ongoing with its performance. It's third target, niche, and position. The EV supercar is going to be a completely different vehicle. It's an entry level, it's an entry level in matters of price, but performance, you're talking 1600 horsepower plus, you know, monocoque big, beautiful technology, advanced, great, great looking car and accessible. That's, that's a beautiful part of it. Unlimited series, we're not limiting the car to any number and we're looking to produce for the next 10 years and evolve it, you know, into different, you know, variants and models that will come after it. So that's going to be a start for us. Uh, we had to start somewhere and we believe it's going to be quite uh, appealing and exciting uh, for everybody to see it. So stay tuned for next year for this uh, new car coming. Definitely. I, guys, I, I've seen it. I've seen the concepts. I've seen the builds. I know the price point it's coming into. I see what other manufacturers are doing. Um, and this is pretty fantastic. It really <laughs> is <you>. fantastic. <laughs> so this is really it here, guys. Um, one last thing I want to hit on before we go. So we're in the very real world here. It's rocky. It's dusty. You're building cars. You're doing all that. However, there's a big portion of what's coming up that is in the digital world. Yeah. Can you can you hint upon what's going on with that or some visions there? Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, everybody knows or everybody's into somehow something to do related to virtual, mm -hmm. whether it's your video game or playing on your phone or connecting through Zoom or there is something related to the virtual world that's happening today. There's an NFT world. There is the metaverse that's being announced recently, and everybody wants to be part of it somehow. So W announced literally, I think, in March this year that we launched W 2.0. W 2.0 is a 10 year program that's going to be ongoing for the next eight, nine, ten years to position the brand and shift it from a mobility company to an immersive tech company. And it's happening as we speak, is launching these packages, uh, package one, two, or three, that gives you immersive experiences by owning a car in the virtual world, driving it in the virtual world, but owning your own car and driving your own car, building a virtual garage, and possibly also driving a real car that comes with it. It's something we're gonna announce a bit more when, it, you know, when, it, sure. when in due time, Yeah. but we are actually heavily working on it, and that's gonna be Two different parallel worlds for W: physical, you see here, and the virtual that's happening in the back end that's going to be related somehow in the next couple of years. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys, I've seen it. It's not just words. It's not just fluff. It's it's real and it's exciting because it's on the leading edge and, and we are really here at the beginning with Ralph. So I hope all of you car enthusiasts and everybody out there have enjoyed seeing this. Thanks for thanks for opening the doors. Yeah, it's, and it's my pleasure. You guys are the first to see that actually. Nobody's ever seen the factory in construction. Yes. And as you know, you didn't even know there was a factory bag getting built here. And uh, and here we are standing in it. So I'm away, really happy beautiful. and uh, Skyline. really proud to be sharing with you guys. Thank yeah. you. Well, um, gosh, I really appreciate it. So guys, whole series coming up. Gonna show all the vehicles. We're gonna drive them and have a heck of a lot of fun. Ralph, thank you. Thanks, Casey. <laughs> 2013, the Genius Garage educational programs have been responsible for launching the careers of young engineers, mechanics, and fabricators. So this holiday season, consider checking out Genius Garage and its website, geniusgarageracing.com, and making a donation. Whether it's small or large, what we do together is how we shape a better future for everyone. Thanks for watching.